Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to be going over a few rendering tips with you that are just going to help you blend those shadowed areas in your drawings in with the lighted areas a lot more easily and just a lot more effectively. So if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe below and click that bell button to get notified whenever I post a new video. Alright, so we're going to be starting off with these two examples and I'm going to show you how to go from this example on the left to this example on the right. Just to clean it up a bit, give it a bit more form and more texture. And we're going to do this all by going through five, five rendering tips that are really just going to make that difference because when I used to render, I was just all over the place and I had no idea what I was doing. And when I actually started to read up a little more about what you're supposed to do exactly, it made a huge difference in my drawings. So I'm starting off here with the first step. And the first step that you're going to want to focus on is varying your line weights. This is going to be really important for just not making your drawing look flat and just really transitioning those shadowed areas into your lighted areas a lot smoother. So instead of having these straight lines that are just the same thickness all the way through, you're going to try to vary that a bit more. And you're going to start by pressing a little harder when you first go down to lightening up at the end. So you, it's just flicking that stroke. And it's just starting thicker at the bottom and lightening up at the top. And that's just going to give you a lot smoother of a gradation of your light and dark tones. So the second step we're going to focus on or the second tip is to follow the contours of your object. So whatever object you're drawing, whether it's a sphere or a cylinder or a square, you're going to want to think about what are the contours of that object? What is its form? What parts of it are raised? What parts of it are dipped down? Is it rounded? And you're going to want you're going to want your cross hatching to follow that pattern. So if we have a sphere here, just your basic sphere, you're not going to want to cross hatch just straight lines across it like this. Instead, you're going to want to follow the contours. And if your object is round, you're going to want to curve your lines, follow the contours of the object. If you just use straight lines, that is going to make your drawing look a lot flatter and more two dimensional. Whereas if you're using these more curved or whatever lines you want to use that suits the form of the shape you're drawing, it's going to give your drawing a lot more depth and bring it and just bring it to life more. So the third tip is find your lighting. Think about always try to give your drawings a light source. Think about where the light is coming from and wherever that light is coming from you're going to think about how that affects your object what areas are going to be hit by the light and what areas are not going to be hit by the light so instead of having kind of this first square that's or cube that's just very there's cross hatching kind of everywhere and there isn't really any um method to the madness um consider where your light's coming from so say the light in this scenario is coming kind of from the left then the back two planes of the cube are going to be cast in shadow and your rendering is going to be based on that so you're going to render away from the shadow and toward cross hatch towards the area that's cast in light this is going to give your cross hatching a lot more purpose it's going to kind of give it a formula so that you aren't just throwing lines kind of randomly all over your drawing, which is kind of what I used to do. And it's going to make a huge difference. So the fourth step is to find your pattern. In other words, crosshatch with a plan. Organize your cross hatching and come up with your own 
method. If you look at different artists and the way that they cross hatch, you're gonna see that they each kind of have their own formula that they tend to stick to and it keeps their drawings and their rendering and their cross hatching a lot more consistent and a lot cleaner. So if you look at someone like David Finch versus someone like Jim Lee, and you look at their rendering styles, you can see the way they transition their shadows into their lighted areas has a consistent method and it's very unique and different between artists. So it takes a lot of experimenting to kind of find your own kind of method or formula. I know I haven't really found mine yet. It's just a lot of like experimenting and kind of deciding what you feel most comfortable with and what ultimately helps you achieve that goal the best for you. So if you see on the left example, some artists do it where they just start with blacks and they start with vertical lines or horizontal lines that are very close together and as they get further towards the lighted areas, they'll just draw those vertical lines a bit more spaced apart. Whereas other artists will layer their cross hatching, like the two examples on the right. And so the fifth and last tip that I'm going to give you guys is to use, try to use quick strokes. This is especially important when you're inking something. Because if, you, if you're inking something and you're using very slow strokes and pressing very hard the whole way through, it's going to give you kind of a wobbly and kind of a messy line. Sometimes it might not be too noticeable, but if you really try to make those, those strokes very quick, and very confident, that's gonna come back to varying your line weight and it's gonna help you a lot with that, but it's also gonna help you a lot to give you a clean line throughout your drawing. It's gonna tighten up your inks and it's gonna ultimately help you to cross hatch in a more consistent and clean manner. So now if we take these five tips and we apply them to the cylinder on the right, we're gonna see that if you have the one tip, find your lighting, well it's coming from the, the right side, so the left side of the cylinder is going to be primarily cast in shadow because that part is not getting hit by the light at all. Then we're just going to throw in a little bit of hatching just to keep this other area pretty dark, but just to also keep the round form of the cylinder and that goes back to following your object's contours and thinking about how your form of the object is gonna affect your cross-hatching and your rendering. So now, this is kind of where it comes to finding your pattern and cross-hatching with your own kind of formula and plan. And I kind of like to start out with a few thick lines that get a little bit thinner as you go away from your shadowed area. And then after I've done that, After I've done that, I like to come in with my pen now and I want it to be relatively thick so that I have a bit more control over that, over those lines. And then I like to come in and I like to just cross hatch horizontally across these vertical lines just to blend them in a little more. Now this is totally all up to you guys. Everyone has their own method. This is just personally how I like to do it. And this is actually kind of a new pen that I've been using lately in Clip Studio with um, kind of a bit different settings than I'm used to, so it's taking a while just to play around with it and figure out kind of just to get used to it and to get used to again like um, varying that line weight. And if you are using Clip Studio, it's important to make sure you have this, your settings turned on, or even if you're using Procreate, make sure you have your settings turned on so that um, whatever pen or pencil you're using um, actually responds to your t the touch of your pen so that if you press harder with your pen, it's going to give you a thicker line weight, and if once you press lighter, it's going to give you that lighter line weight so that you can really vary your line weights more effectively. And now this is totally optional again, depends on your personal preference, but I just kind of like to go in a little bit with some texture here. 
kind of looks a little bit messy here, but you can also use that to transition your shadowed areas into your lights. So thanks for watching, and if there's any other kinds of tutorials you guys would like to see, make sure to suggest them in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and click that bell to get notified when I post the next video.